Hi, Dr. Reagan Robertson, CCO of Productive Dentist Academy here, and I have a question for you. Are you finding it hard to get your team aligned to your vision, but you know you deserve growth just like everybody else? That's why we've created the PDA Productivity Workshop. For nearly 20 years, PDA workshops have helped dentists just like you align their teams, get control of scheduling, and create productive practices that they love walking into every day. Just imagine how you will feel when you know your schedule is productive, your systems are humming, and your team is aligned to your vision. It's simple, but it's not necessarily easy. We can help. Visit ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop. That's ProductiveDentist.com slash workshop to secure your seats now. With that Northern Star, you can go from being transactional to transformational. Mm-hmm. And that is really, really a profound difference. So, so creating a very unique and specialized patient experience that has patients raving and telling their friends and, and getting home and sharing with their spouses and their significant others and anyone who will listen is a really great way to create a competitive free zone. Welcome to the Everyday Practices podcast. I'm Reagan Robertson and my co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson and I are on a mission to share the stories of everyday dentists who generate extraordinary results using practical proven methods you can take right into your own dental practice. If you're ready to elevate patient care and produce results that are anything but ordinary, buckle up and listen in. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Practices Dental Podcast. I am your host as always, Reagan Robertson, and I am having a one-on-one interview today that you will not want to miss. It is my absolute honor to introduce Paul Vigario. He's an American entrepreneur, innovator, and founder, CEO of CT, which is a design, brand, and technology integration company. Today, listeners, you are going to learn why where there has never been a better time to reimagine the patient experience. And let me tell you a little story before I bring Paul in. Years ago, I was a young, struggling graphic designer, fresh out of school, and I went to a little Italian restaurant, and in it was the most beautiful art I have ever seen on the walls, these gigantic canvases. They were ethereal depictions of everyday life, and I couldn't explain to you why I wasn't I just couldn't take my eyes off of them and I was pulled into the story, but they used, uh, the artist used a color palette that I'd never seen before, depicted for everyday life. And I looked in the corner and I saw Tom Jensen kind of scribbled in the corner of these massive pieces. And I quickly went to the Google, as we all do, and I said, I have to have one of these pieces. Well, they were 15,000 to start which as a young struggling graphic designer, you know, I did not have the capacity to go buy one of these pieces, but I had my personality. So I found his email, emailed him, told him I was a young struggling artist myself. I so loved his pieces and I would make him the best chocolate chip cookies he ever had in his life if he would give me a piece of art. And he actually wrote back and he said, you're in luck. I love chocolate chip cookies and I will make you a deal if you don't tell my agent. Long story short, I said yes. I actually drove down to his studio. I got the most beautiful piece of art. And what I learned in that little hour of my life was how visionaries come to life. And from my humble opinion, it is the ability to reimagine the ordinary. He actually, uh, for his career, was a Boeing engineer. He designed the concepts that the engineers took and put into reality. So you think of the Dreamliners, you think of all these future planes that are coming out. He was the artist that conceptualized it. And he told me, Reagan, all I do is take traditional everyday scenes and I apply a completely different color palette to it. That's why it dazzles you and amazes you. It takes something that you see every single day and it puts it in a new perspective for you. My mind was totally blown. And Paul, that is exactly how it has been knowing you and knowing Surf CT for the past couple of years that I, uh, I've definitely been honored to understand what your company does. So welcome to our show. And I'm really excited for our conversation so you can help dentists reimagine the patient experience. Thank you. Wow, that was an amazing introduction. And that's, a, that's an amazing story, you know, going from from ordinary to extra, 
um, extraordinary, you know, taking it to that level. So um, thank you for that introduction. Yeah, well, let's talk about what you do and what Surf CT does with with doctors. So I think sometimes as Dennis, I don't know if you'd agree with me or not, Paul, but I think we have blinders on and I think we just sort of trust things that have always existed. So you get your build out from Henry Schein, for example, right? You've got your building design and say I'm a dentist that's going to go in and build a practice. Why would I question what they had uh, in mind? Wouldn't I just go through the paces and just do what always has been done? Well, that's what so many doctors do is they just go through the paces and do what's been done, but it's already been done and there's nothing, you know, special about it. And, and, you know, dentistry is an amazing industry. It's an amazing industry. It's it's at about a hundred billion dollars right now in the U S market. And it's going to go to 200 billion in the next four to five years. I mean, that's a tremendous. It's going to double in five years. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to double in five years oral health care in the U S market. It's tremendous. It's absolutely amazing. I think the, the NFL is like an $80 billion industry just to keep it, you know, <laughs> like, you know, so it's really, really amazing. But if you're doing what everybody else is doing, it's going to be really hard to, to stand out, right. To stand out and to shine. And speaking of football and the NFL, people often talk about how, you know, in business, they say, you know, I want a level playing field. And I always get a kick out of that because do you really want a level playing field? Or do you want, <laughs> like, is that really what people want? Or do you want to be running downhill you know, screaming and having a good time as you're going, I want to be running downhill. So, um, you know, we don't want a level playing field. You know, it's a competitive sport and we want to win. Winning is fun. Let's talk about the ways that we uh, that we become competitive because I do implants, you do implants, the doctor down the street does implants, and that's a really surface level way of looking at dentistry. I like to put up a huge black screen when I do presentations with the words in white general dentist. How Mm -hmm. is anyone going to know the difference between me or you if we both have the title of dentist? And uh, I think it comes down to brand in part. And I know you and I have a really good relationship with how we view brands. Can you tell our listeners how brand plays a part in your opinion on uh, differentiating yourself from others down the street? I think brand is important. It's it's an emotional connection. Um, It's, you know, a lot of people think brand is like a logo and the logo is just like a graphic, right? It's just a graphic. And what what comes into that graphic and how your brand stands for something Mm -hmm. um, is how you make your choices day in and day out. I often say that our brand is like a Northern star. So if you get lost and you need to make a choice, ask yourself what your brand stands for. What are your values? And, And that will really help. And, and essentially, when you start to create that level of alignment with your brand and with your vision and with your team and choices start being made with that Northern star, you can go from being transactional to transformational. Mm-hmm. And that is really, really a profound difference. So, so creating a very unique and specialized patient experience that has patients raving and telling their friends and and getting home and sharing with their spouses and their significant others and anyone who will listen is a really great way to create a competitive free zone. And so, yes, there could be three dentists in town and they could all be, you know, you know, selling implants or talking about implants or doing implants. But when you create a brand that stands for something and you have alignment within your team and within your practice, and your patients can feel, they can feel that patient experience and they can share that with the world. Well, that's a transformational experience. And at that point, you're in a competition-free zone. No one around you per se matters because your brand stands for something. I mean, does, does Nike really compete against other sneakers? I'm not sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about feeling the patient experience. I like that you hitched it with emotion because there's a translation to me that's very, very vital here. So how do you take that transformation? And listeners, go back and listen to my episode where Chad and I talk about core values because, uh, Paul, you just mentioned being the North Star. So understanding your mission and your core values is critical step one. How do we take that, Paul, and translate it into actual physical practice design? So I'm here with the Henry Shine blueprint and I'm looking at it and I'm like, Paul, how in the heck do I, how do you make that patient experience feel the way that I want it to feel? Well, let's start with, you know, what happens when a patient walks into your practice, you know, 90%, if not 95% of the layouts or designs that we initially see have all these chairs lined up against the wall. 
And yeah. it looks like you've arrived at the, you know, at the DMV, right? It looks like you've arrived at the DMV. So they're all lined up against the wall. And, and then there's this like circular front desk that, you know, has been circular since the 1980s. <laughs> and, yes. And we're in 2023, you know, just so, in case, you know, anyone forgot. And, um, you know, how does that make you feel? You know, you, you get there and it's kind of got a, a you versus us with the front desk activity there, or at least, you know, the, the physical positioning of the front desk. And then you've got the DMV like seating. And then, and so, so many often cases, you've got three or four, you know, seats at the front desk. And, and that's really, you know, putting all your business on display. You got the phones ringing, you have people trying to connect with the insurance company, yes. you have check in, check out. And right away, you know, it's tough to create a feeling there. You know, there's going to be a feeling of I need to survive the day for your team who has to work at your front desk. Also, I'll often tell, you know, I'll often tell doctors, go to your front desk and hang out there for like 30 minutes to an hour. And, and they go up there for five minutes and they are like, I can't, I have to like run in the back. I said, so why put, why put them in that position where the phones are ringing there's this competition for attention, but no one can get the attention. No one person or, or one thing is really getting the attention that it deserves, right? If, you're, if you've been waiting for the insurance company and they finally pick up, you want to give that attention. But now somebody walks in and, you know, and, and what are you doing? So there's really a lot of drama created in that physical space and, and taking that design and looking at it with what's possible in 2023 is paradigm shifting. It's an absolute paradigm shift. And it puts your practice in a position to win, your patients in a position to win. And you can create more of a lounge-like feel when you walk in. You can have a little kiosk with a hostess. He or she can, you know, really take care of the patient, welcome them, welcome them, greet them. And that business activity could be somewhere where it belongs, you know, in a business unit, in a business office. And those people could be focused and you're taking them out of survival mode and putting them into productivity mode. So suddenly the patients are coming in, they've got a paradigm shift on what that feels like. They have a feeling. There's a hostess that is taking great care of them. The business unit is doing what it should be doing, business. And, and suddenly that could be tied, that vision could be tied to, to a brand that starts to create feelings. And I always say that humans, you know, we're all, we're all like chasing feelings, if you think about it. Like we're, we're all chasing feelings. Hey, how are you? What are you doing this weekend? You know, Hey, I just went to Disney. You know, that's a, you're chasing a feeling. <laughs> you're just chasing, we're all chasing feelings, whether it's like going out to dinner or, or watching a movie or, or going to Disney or, you know, we're chasing feelings. So why not create the best possible feelings in your practice and designing offices the same way they've been designed for the last 30 years um, isn't isn't a way to create a competition free zone. You know, it's, it's, it's just not. You said, uh, you said paradigm shift a couple of times. I think it's a generational shift that you're actually meeting, which I don't think I have thought of before, but really when you think about the needs of each generation, each generation has something that they pin that value on. So boomers, they are, they value being individuals. They were raised during that post-World War II era. So everything was um, about capturing that feeling and really holding that proud. But we know millennials value experience. That is the number one thing millennials value is experience. Gen Z, which is quickly coming up as well, they value that social justice element. So not only do they want their teeth taken care of, they want to know how you're actually making the community a better place. And what I see you doing in that, what you just explained there, is you are shifting. It is a paradigm shift, but I think it's a paradigm shift to meet the generational needs that perhaps some of these larger corporate entities have not even, I don't know that their eyes are even on it yet. So they're designing as if we are serving boomers when actually Actually, we're shifting into serving millennials and soon to be Gen Zs as well. I completely agree. You know, I think that's accurate. And I also think that what's going on with the design is the technology's pressure on the design, right? Or the technology's yes. involved, you know, evolving the design. So technology inspires design and design inspires technology, right? So just, you know, 10 years ago, if you were going through a toll, There'd be this toll gate that would come down 
and and you would you know stay there and 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 eventually make it through and and you know pay your toll right yes um and then somewhere around five six years ago there's this like easy pass thing that comes out and you've got some lanes that you pay and you've got some lanes that you're in an easy pass and can I, <laughs> And today, I easy pass it every day, just so you're aware. <laughs> Convenience yeah, well, is king. Yeah, well, today there's no like two lines anymore. Today it's just, you know, everybody through. And if you don't have it, we'll take a picture of your plate and we'll send it to you in the mail. So it's uh, it's very, very different, you know. And that was in the span of the last 10 years, how that really evolved. But yet there are, there are thousands of new practices st- still being built with that, with that, you know, toll coming down. And, and that's no way to create an amazing experience or an amazing feeling. And that's the first impression. That's the practice's mm-hmm. first impression. So then you've got the rest of the practice, just the way it's laid out. It's not designed or they're not designed to take full advantage of the frictionless technologies that are available. Because today you can't go through a toll without paying because they're gonna right. get your play. They're gonna take care of it. There's frictionless technologies and, and these technologies exist, but if, if your practice is being designed the way it was 20, 30 years ago, even 10 years ago, um, you're not going to be able to take full advantage of that frictionless uh, technology, which essentially creates automation and allows us to anticipate what the patient will want and, and how to make the patient feel special. And if you start to connect these dots together and you can get the design right, you can get the technology right, you can capture the doctor's vision you can anticipate what's going to come next, automate that, and and really create a great you know experience. Connect that to a brand. You start to create automation in practice, and that's that's a game changer for for doctors and for entrepreneurs and for private practice owners. You know, a practice that you build that works for you versus the traditional model, which has been a practice that you build that you have to work in. That's that's a game changer. Let's talk a minute about what's possible regarding technology. Uh, Two things happened to me in the past week, and one of the injustices that I see for doctors and for myself, for anyone that's passionate about whatever industry you happen to be in, is ignorance. Uh, I really get disappointed if I find out that something has existed and I didn't even know it was possible. And I'm like, well, where have I been all of these years? Like, what? this has been a thing the entire time, but there's only so many hours a day. There's only so many conferences I can attend. Uh, you know what we need, Paul? We need a South by Southwest for doctors. Let's pin that here. We're going to talk about that. I think yeah. we need something that talks about what's really cool and upcoming and uh for me, one of my friends texted me the other day and he figured out how to do his entire gaming setup completely wireless. And he was so proud of it. And that same day I got a text from my husband who was showing me this monitor and had like a really nice frame around it. So it looked like a piece of art as opposed to a monitor. And he's like, look how cool this is. And I was like, well, I have to have this. We have to have this in our home now from now on. Yes. What you're pointing to on your screen. We have to have that from now on. That is slick. And that is cool. Uh, what is, tell me a little bit, like I'm a visual learner. What is possible today in these dental practices that helps take that experience for me? Like I'm, I get a little bit scared. Think about all the, um, the way that our monitors are set up today or the way that the experience is. It's a clinical setting and it makes me feel a little bit, maybe just a little bit apprehensive to, for example, something like that's a beautiful framed piece of art. Now I'm in a whole different environment. What does the visual of that look like? And what's possible, Paul, for a dental practice? Yeah, what, what's possible for a practice today in 2023 is to start looking at the practice as three different sections of the practice. You've got this, this lounge-like area that could be very much um you know, accommodating for new patients and really designed to take some of that pressure off of seeing a dental chair and, and going right to an operatory. So when we're looking at the design, we create this, this almost like storefront look to the practice, almost like a, um, a Tesla showroom where that's the showroom. Then you've got a business section of the practice where, you know, real business activity happens from, you know, making phone calls to, you know, processing claims to, to doing all of the business aspects of the practice. And then you've got the clinical component of the practice. So, so often when we work with plastic surgeons, um, you know, you'll meet a plastic surgeon, you'll talk about the procedures, but you're doing so in a very calming and relaxing environment. 
If you choose to move forward and you come back, you may go to the hospital, you may go to a surgery center, you may go to a more sterile clinical environment. Traditional dentistry has put you in a waiting room and then they'll call you up and you go straight to a clinical environment. And then there's conversation there about whether you want to move forward or not, which <laughs> yep. you're kind of creating like a level of anxiety right off the yes. bat, right? So first I'm going to make you wait and then I'm going to put you in this high anxiety environment. And now what we can do is, is really understand these different patient tracks and these different patient journeys and yeah. design a practice that has the new patient journey, has the existing patient journey, has the business journey, has, you know, the like all the different journeys that a patient can go through so that they can go through the practice and, and feel like they're progressing through their journey in a very, very comfortable way, right? So it's just, it's so different. It's so different. And I really think technology has, has elevated the design. And I think that when design and technology are thought of together, not yeah. as an afterthought, I think, you know, magic starts to happen there. My brain, your brain, I, I'm assuming here, goes into the abundance. You stay in that anything is possible environment. Do you have to have a limitless budget to get a great patient experience? Because that's where my, my pessimistic mind is like, oh my gosh, how much do I have to change everything in the practice? Is this going to cost me a million dollars? Do you, it, uh, is it, can you meet me where I'm at, I guess, is what I'm asking, regardless, like maybe I have a practice that's already existing right now. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we so often meet so many clients where they're at. And, and when we connect with them, we actually show them how this all works. And the reality is if you're building a new practice, it's actually more affordable to build it like this because you don't have that front desk, right? Mm -hmm. So right away, you're mm -hmm. eliminating this monstrosity. You're getting more square footage for what you actually need to use it for. And even the efficiencies of what's the most expensive thing in any business, which is human capital, right? Mm -hmm. Human resources. And, and putting two or three people at the front in survivability mode is a very expensive way to run a business just okay, not to, want to, not to run a business that's focused and winning. So we're actually, doctors are really, really shocked when they see um, that after they've connected with us, it's actually more affordable to build new. I, I have a doctor in Chicago who is building a practice. He had a $4 million budget and that was a very, very big budget. Mm -hmm. And he was shocked that after talking to the industry, you know, they were at 4.8 because, you know, they wanted to build the big waiting room and the big front desk, oh, and, sure. and put all these chairs that no one's ever going to show up and say, Hey, that's a so-and-so chair. Patients don't know what kind of chair they're sitting in. So when he connected with us and he was told, he was like, Hey, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty expensive, but he connected with us because he wanted to say like, how much more expensive could this get? Mm -hmm. We actually showed him what was possible. His practice came way down, about 33% less he was able to build a practice for it, right? And how does that work, right? We focused the nice finishes on that storefront side, on that new patient side. On the business side, we went with like university finishes, right? Like, yes. like, like very like, you know, clean, but nothing fancy because it's business, right? It's yeah. like a like place you work. And on the clinical side, we went very sterile. We didn't have to use the, you know, the fancy, you know, Brazilian walnut wood. We just, <laughs> yes, we just I know very, exactly what you mean. Yeah. So we went very sterile. So he got a beautiful patient, uh, patient facing, you know, practice that is attracting patients is making them feel amazing. And he got a very productive business unit that requires less people and there's way less drama and they're more focused. And he got the clinical space and, and sterile look that he really wanted. If you think about it, when you go to like a Four Seasons, right? And you mm -hmm. walk in, the lobby is gorgeous. You, you feel like you've arrived. You've been on a long flight. This is what you're paying for, right? Like you show mm -hmm. up, this is awesome. By the time you make it up to your room, yeah, it's nice, but it's not that different. The rooms aren't that different than like a, a, a Marriott, a Courtyard Marriott. They're just right? not that different, right? Yes. So, so when I say that the industry is at 100 billion and it's going to go to 200 billion, it's definitely going to go to 200 billion. But, but whose stock is that? Is that going to be your stock? Is that the practices stock that's rising? Or is that the industry stock that's rising? And that really depends on, you know, who you connect with and, and who your circle is and, and, and awareness, right? Awareness of, of what's possible. So we love connecting with doctors. We've done over 12,000 private practices 
Um, we've been doing this for 22 years as a team. And um, what's really magical is when we connect, we just show them what's possible, right? I was speaking with a doctor recently and he said, hey, I've been talking to all my friends, so I kind of know what's possible. And I said, yeah, but all your friends are in the same, you know, they're in the same, you know, you know pool, right? And, right. and you kind of know, you kind of know that chocolate's possible. You kind of know that vanilla's possible. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe maybe chocolate and vanilla swirl, but we're Baskin Robbins. We've got all the different flavors. And and he was like, he thought that was funny. But when we started to show him uh, and really kind of peel back, you know, you know, peel back the curtains, suddenly it was like, whoa. So I can I can build this really beautiful. I can kind of have this business section just be what it's there for business, and I can have clinical be less fancy, but just super sterile, which is really what I need. Yeah. So he's got A plus finishes on the front of the practice. He's got, you know, C in the business because you don't need anything too fancy to work. Right. And on the, you know, on the sterile side, he's got the best technology because he was able to focus on that versus what happens now where you want to build this, but someone comes in and says, hey, you can't afford that. So you got to go from an A to a B minus or a C for the whole practice. That's just not the way it has to be done. So it's actually more, to answer your question, it is, it is more cost effective and in so many times more affordable to connect with us and just understand what the possibilities are. Because when you have choice, you can choose what's going to work best for you versus having, you know, the industry tell you, and they're telling the same thing to everybody. So it becomes, becomes pretty hard to, to compete when, when everybody's, you know, playing on a, on a level playing field. So. Okay, you blew my mind because I realized in that little story about Tom Jensen that I told that you were actually, you didn't know that I was going to tell that story. You are doing what Tom Jensen did for art. You literally are taking and looking at the practice strategically and you're applying a strategy of the four seasons and putting it into dentistry. And you know, at Productive Dentist Academy, I always say, work smarter, not harder, which I think is a bit of cliche, but you have actually done that and applied it to the patient experience. Yeah. Yeah. The patient experience. And I even think the team experience too. And yes, and keep the team together because you know, when you're, when you're being productive at work and you feel like you're gaining traction, it feels good to be on the team. And when you're put in an environment where you just got to survive, the really good players are going to leave because they want to win. And the players that are so-so, uh, they're going to get pretty good at surviving. And that's not, you know, what you want, because no. you, at that point, you're, again, you're building a practice to work in it, right? And we want you to build a practice that goes to work for you and goes to work for your patients and for your team, right? And, and just creates this awesome environment and this awesome feeling. And then you take that feeling and you connect it to your brand. And now you've got something that really shines in the community. So we, we, we love what we do. It, it's really fun, but it's really fun to, you know, when it's done and to see it through the eyes of the doctor and, and the eyes of the team and, and watch them win, so. Paul, what is the best way for someone to evaluate their own practice and be able to take the steps necessary to reimagine their own patient experience? Well, it really is a matter of taking inventory of, of where you started as a practitioner and, and where you are today, right? And I always tell doctors, if you can have anything, forget what people have told you, forget what the industry has told you. If you could have anything at all, if anything was possible, what would that be? And we get all different answers, but what's really great about living in 2023 is the technologies that are available and the automations that are available, we could create that outcome for our doctors. And, and that is tremendous. Some doctors want to just practice more clinically and not be part of the business. Others want to be more on the business side and not clinical. Some want to open up offices all around the country. Some want to spend more time at home with their families or golf more. And um, I think the best way to take an inventory of where you are is to ask yourself those three questions. Where did I start? Where am I today? And if anything was possible, if anything was possible, what would I want? What would I want? Because if you're totally great with all those three things, great, you don't have to change a thing. But if there's anything there that is resonating for you, we should have a conversation because we're not going to come at this from an industry perspective. We're going to come at this from from 20 years of experience, two decades, 12,000 practices, and really show you how to achieve that, that transformational growth 
the, the thing that you want most that you didn't think was possible, we'll show you how to do it. And um, when I talk with doctors and they're like, yeah, that sounds great. Well, th then I'll lead them to our Instagram. I'll say, well, check out our Instagram because, you know, uh, by the way, it's at surfct.com. So all one word, but I say, check out our Instagram because you just see story after story after story of transformational growth. And here's the part that's really interesting is it's different for all our clients, right? Some, some clients want to travel the world and, and be in different countries. Others want to spend time with their family. Others want to be more entrepreneurial. Others want to launch an education program or, or be more clinical. And it's really, really different. But we're not a transactional company. We're a transformational company. And, and taking all these pieces, it's not about computers. It's not even just about design. It's about what happens when all of these pieces and all of these parts come together. As we say, everything is connected. And that spills over into your life and elevates, elevates your life and those around you, your family, your team, your patients. It's why it's so amazing. But taking inventory is a matter of seeing where you are today and if anything was possible, where you'd want to be, and then reaching out and just having a conversation. Listeners, uh, even if you're driving in the car right now, pull over. I want you to pull over right now, pick up a pen, open up your phone and get to your notepad. And I want you to write this down. If anything was possible, how would your dream practice feel and underline feel because anything is possible and paul thank you so much for taking time out of your day and sharing with all of us uh, how you've been reimagining the way that dentistry is practiced and uh, some tips that can help others get into that transformation out of transactional and into transformation thank you you're welcome have a great day Thank you for listening to another episode of Everyday Practices Podcast. Chad and I are here every week thanks to our community of listeners just like you, and we'd love your help. It would mean the world if you can help spread the word by sharing this episode with a fellow dentist and leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. Do you have an extraordinary story you'd like to share or feedback on how we can make this podcast even more awesome? Drop us an email at podcast at productivedentist.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts from Productive Dentist Academy at ProductiveDentist.com slash podcasts. See you next week.